Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michael and I like to do motorcycle related content. Be it with my Harley, my little camper trailer, my teardrop trailer that I'm building. So this week if you've watched my last episode of what's coming next, um, you'll know I mentioned um, I went for a bit of a ride and as I was out on my ride I noticed my handlebars were bent. I moved the bike probably 30 centimetres last week with the cover down and when I moved it, it hooked up the uh, side stand and as I went to put the bike down, the bike toppled over. I thought it only went down to the um, crash bars on the side but on the way down it clipped my little camper trailer and bent the handlebars. After many colourful words, I've had to swap out my handlebars. So this will be, um, I'm doing one of two things. I am I currently have standard stock bars, which are like a, a mini ape. They're a seven and a half inch riser on a mini ape. So I'm going to swap them out to a 10 inch, again, a mini ape, um, so I can use the same cabling and the same length. Um, and I've ordered some uh, bars from Barcraft in Melbourne. Um, they're a slightly thicker bar and they're a stainless steel uh, bar as opposed to chrome. And I hope they'll arrive sometime next week. So what I'm going to do this week is pull these handlebars off um, and get ready for the next ones. So it may be all in one video or I might do it as a two part series. We see how we go. So what I need to do is take my screen off, take my headlight assembly out um, to allow me to get to the bolts that hold my handlebar on. Um, take all my levers and bits and pieces off. These are all done by a T25 torque wrench. Um, and just to screw under here to take my halogen light off to get into the cow, to get the covers off. It's all it's all quite fiddly for what it is, but I'll show you as I go through. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. I can't really do anything to the camper trailer at the moment until my tow hitch comes back from being milled um, and until I get some timber. So I thought I'd fix these handlebars so I can at least ride the bike again. So let's do it. So as I said, I need to take my headlight assembly off to get this piece out, um, to get my locks off. So this will come up, pry off with a little screwdriver, uh, to take the lock assembly out, and then we'll do, do the front. What I'll do first is remove the screen, the headlight assembly, and then work back. Um, I've just got an old towel covering my tank just so I don't scratch it or anything. But make sure you cover your tanks or and protect your paintwork um, before you do any anything like this. You know, you drop a spanner, you drop a tool, it scratches your paintwork pretty easy. So this configuration will be similar in many Harleys. Mine happens to be a Road King, as you know. Um, so I've got quick release screen, which is just two clips, pulling it up, holding it on. And with a small screwdriver, I'll just take off my ignition thing. I've got a little table here I'm working on, so I can put my parts down. So I need to take my cowl off, which is just a screw. This is a genuine Harley cow, but it's not the stand one for the Road King. This is uh, a locomotive style one with a little fluted edge on it. So there's seven screws around the outside I need to remove to take the headlight assembly out so I can get to the cabling. Now I've only gone with a 10 inch ape. I didn't want to go too high. 
I still want to be comfortable, so this will give me a little more comfort from the standard bars. Mind you, I find the standard bars very comfortable, but this way I also don't have to change the length of my cables. Um, because that's just another expense. I'm not doing this because I want to, I'm doing this because I had to, and that's the difference. This is an, a, an upgrade by choice. This is an upgrade by necessity. Um, in a recent video, or recent, in a distant video, I should say, um, I changed my standard headlights to these halogen ones. Um, so I don't need to take my headlight off. It's a small bolt up here. That's what I need to take out. I could probably do it via taking the headlight out itself, but this will take remove the whole assembly. Isn't necessarily the quickest way, but it'll definitely give me more room to work. And I already know my headlight is set for my angles and bits and pieces, so I don't need to change that at all. It's three, three screws compared to seven screws. That's the difference. Um, if you have a, a original headlight in yours, you need to take this assembly off as they are cupped behind and you can't get inside it. Where this one is actually open. So I can get behind it easily. But as I said, for the sake of four small screws, it's not an issue. I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly where you are there, but I had a, a bug hit my headlight one day when I was riding and I wasn't, uh, I didn't concern me that much, you know, everyone gets bugs. But when I went to wipe it off when I got home, whatever the stomach content was, it um, tarnished the front of my headlight because this is only a, a plastic cover and it reacted to, must have been their stomach acid. And I had a big um, foggy piece in the middle of it for a long, long time. I've slowly buffed it out, but I know it's there. To the general eye, you probably couldn't see it, but I know it's there. So whenever you go out for a ride, soak your uh, bugs off your headlights straight away. That's one of the few things I do now. And so if you get bugs and things on your bike, that's not the issue, but whatever I hit this particular instance, that did. So remember to hold your headlight in too when you remove this, especially the last screw, because otherwise it will fall down into your guard or something. So I'm just taking the last screw out. Today is Saturday, I'm hoping to get a headlight by probably Wednesday or Thursday next week. But I can't ride the bike at the moment, so I'm pulling this apart. So with that assembly, see I've got an open back so I can actually remove mine. So I'll just unplug it from the standard headlight position. So you need to feel for it, but at the front, there is an eight millimeter um, little nut. It'll come off fairly easy. Um, probably best recommended with a socket. Don't think I need the extension arm. And that will release your little clip. And then on top, there's a screw here. So that will just clip in. That's just a decorative piece.
so, like everything else on this Harley, nothing's easy. Um, on that top screw, this one here, there's a little backing bolt. So you've got to slip your fingers in there and take that out. <clears throat> That's not the problem. The problem is, once you remove that, these two in here that I showed you earlier, every other video I've watched and whatever had two Phillips head screws in there. Not mine. No, I had mine pot riveted on for some reason. So I've had to drill those pot rivets out and now this comes off. So I'll find two little screws to put back in there and that'll make it easy. Why mine was riveted on, I have no idea. But like I said, nothing in this Harley comes easy to me. So what I'll do now is I'll remove these screws here on both sides and lower the section down and remove my um, proof as well. So then I can just um, take this off. If you just want to tighten your handlebars, this little chrome strip here actually pops out and then you can get uh, an Allen wrench down there and just tighten your handlebars. But because I'm removing them, I have to remove this whole thing. As I said, I, I looked at this thing and I'm going, it doesn't look right, it doesn't look right. And I've gone up and I've done some research from Harley Davidson and looked in the instruction and manual and stuff, and it's got screws, two tiny little Phillips head screws. Why mine is riveted in, God only knows. Um, they were good quality rivets, admittedly. They were stainless steel rivets, but it was riveted on. So I don't know if someone's trying to make an adjustment or something, lost the screws, um, and decided to put rivets in there. I can't imagine why. And then they've cut them off flush, so you couldn't grip them, grind them, do anything with them. Drilling them out is the only option. So that's what I've done. So what I'll do now is I'll proceed with undoing the rest of these handlebars with a T, I think it's a T25 um, torque screw and we'll continue. So all these should come off fairly easy. Just to make a liar of me. because when I uh, uh, had to change the clutch and things at one stage, I put um, Loctite on it. So that's why it's a bit tight. Just remember to support these. I haven't taken my mirrors and things off because um, it's only the units that I'm disassembling. It's not, don't have to pull everything apart. I'm just carefully putting my screws back in there so they're all kept together. So one at the top, one at the bottom. This releases your hand grips. Um, I think in an earlier video I replaced the hand grips on camera. I'm not quite sure, I can't remember. But you just need to take them off. And again, I'm putting my screws back in so they're in the same place. In 19, uh, sorry, 2008, they went from cables to um, throttle by wire, which is not... Like I said, dropping the screws. Uh, throttle by wire. Um, so it attaches a little bit differently. So I'll show you when I pull this off. So prior to that, they were cable. So my handlebars that I've had to order 
have internal wiring and external. So my throttle is inside and all my cabling is outside. So with this, the throttle comes off. And there's a keyway in the bottom of that. And then it's got this assembly at the end. And it's keyed into the grips and it shows via wire through the handlebars where it's controlled. Um, this handlebar has a keyway cut into the end of it. And when I loosen my handlebars, I'll be able to pull the wire up. There should be two switches about here. And that'll let me release the handlebar. I may have to go into the um, headlight cover and unclip it to remove the whole handlebar again. So what I'll do is I'll remove the other side and then we'll go on to this piece. Well, I don't know what I've recorded and what I haven't now because this damn camera's gone flat. So what I've done is I've taken the handlebars out with a lot of final configuration of getting it out and what a fuck around that was. This should now, I had to take off one of my risers because all these were bolted to the bloody riser. There was a clip to bolt it to the riser. So if I feed this through very gently, I've got cribbed bars, a dimple bar, what they call a dimple bar. And so the wiring is not easy to get out. So these are the plugs I'm chasing. So what I'm going to do is disconnect these, pull them back out through the hole in the bottom. So when the new bars come, I can reconnect them all and fold them in. But holy dooly, what a fuck around this has been. If you ever do this and you are able to take and you are able to take it to a Harley dealership or something like that, if you've got the money and you really don't want the mess around, do it. I don't mind doing it because as I said, I've got nothing else happening at the moment, but holy dooly, it's not the easiest thing to do. And nothing's coming apart easy and it's all a big mess around. I'm thinking at some stage, and I'm not sh sh sure, but I think this unit has been replaced before because I believe after 2016, the um, unit has a different plug on the end where I've got two, but only one actually connects to the system. And this has two on it. So I don't think this part, the th throttle by wire is the original part. I'm not quite sure. I might have to go check later. But yeah, it's been an absolute nightmare. So after I separate this, I think that will do me for the night. So that's my throttle by wire. If you were to have super high handlebars, this is the piece you need to replace. And I'm hoping that's going to get around that dimple okay, so I can get it out. I'm lucky it crimped. Yeah, I'm lucky it crimped on that side. So what I do when I feed it in is I'll drop a cable in there, um, tighten this really tight to it and pull it through. You can see the crown end where this locks in, where this locks in on the end so it's in the right position so it can tell. It's got a keyway in it. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a keyway in it, so it's in the right position, so it can't be messed up. But what a bloody nightmare. There's that kink in the bar. As I said, I don't think I'd like to try to straighten it out because the other one's quite fluid and that one's uh, quite steep. So for now, I'm going to leave that, shake my head a lot and go, what the hell have I done? Hang on, this has got a part number on it or an installation number on it. 
No, it must be the original one. Um, 15th of July, 2009. So it must be the original one. But this has always been loose in my uh, headlight cowl. I've never known what it is. So it must do something, but I don't know what it what it connects to. So anyway, I'll leave it for now and... I'll, um, when I get the new handlebars, we'll do the reverse install. With any luck, it'll be a little bit easier. So, bye for now. Okay, guys. I can't imagine what this is, but it's arrived. Let's just hope it's what I think it is. Okay, as you can see by this profile, it's slightly different. My original ones were wider set and a different pitch at the handles. So it should be interesting to see how this goes. So I'll um, feed the cable through. Um, the best way to do this, I've been told, is if you've got a friend that's got a guitar, is get a guitar string, feed that through strap it on your cable onto it tightly and then feed it back through so i need to feed it through this hole up past the dimple and back out um, the length of the pipe should be the same i should have no problems with the cable length supposedly there still appears to be quite a bit of cable there so that should be good so that connects to about there and comes out so that should give me significant amount so I'll attach that up and we'll feed it through you probably won't be able to see that because of the uh, size of it but all I'm doing is attaching that to the ball end of the um, guitar string with some electrical tape Ideally, I should have probably replaced this cable. Um, when I unclipped it, it was a little bit brittle and the, the, one of the clips broke. But um, at this stage, I'm just going to run with what I've got. These bars have cost me $309. You can get cheaper ones, but these are more for quality. Feed that up through there. I'm just hoping I can get past this dimple easy enough. And oh my god, it worked. So I've just fed that through the wrong way. I needed to feed it through to the throttle end. So we'll take that out and we'll feed it again the other way. So attempt number two, it's now on the key end. So that's good. Again, it was very simple, especially with this uh, guitar, guitar wire. I'll have to remember that because that's uh, uh, firm enough to be strong, but flexible enough to go around the kink. So that was great. Plug in my two plugs. I'm going to wrap a little bit of electrical tape around this just to keep it in place, just in case, because that clip's a little bit fragile. And I'd rather 10 seconds now as opposed to getting down the road and trying to do it while I'm on the road. So it's a lot of doing and throwing to start with, but long term it's well worth it.
and this only goes in one way it has a three-way key in it and it only goes in one way so that's great plenty of length on the cable to go back through and we'll let the nightmare begin so here lies the problem with a, such a shiny bike um like everything else that's happening in my life at the moment the camera turned off so i didn't actually get to show you so what i've done is i've put my headstand back on sorry my riser back on and that has a torque setting of uh 40 newton meters um and i've fed my cables through and i've put them back through so now it's the handlebars i just need to fit um they've got a torque setting of 12 to 16 uh, foot pound or that's um, about 21 newton meters my torque wrench doesn't go that low so i'm going to tension it up to what I think's right. So what they suggest you do is on the front front bolts, you do it so they grip, so they touch together, and then you tension them down at the back uh, to hold your handlebars on. So that's the recommended Harley torque. But um, everyone claims none of them are accurate. So what I'll do, because I don't have a, a torque wrench that goes that small, Mine starts at 40. So it's all right for the understand, but for the lower stand, but it's not for the, it's good for the top one. So I took a phone call, didn't realize my camera turned off, then continued to talk. I was going to edit it out in post-production, but it turned off. So um, you miss seeing me put the headstand on, which is not, no biggie. As I said, it's a reverse to what it was coming off. Um, which I think actually the headstand you missed as well because the camera turned off. So I'm going, getting a sneaking suspicion that doesn't want you to see how I do this headstand. So I've only got red lock tight, so I won't put that much on there. Um, ideally blue would probably be better but because I don't intend taking these off again in the near future a couple of drops of red will suffice so they say to cinch them down at the front and then torsion them from the back so So I won't be able to position them or tighten them down properly until I uh, put my windscreen on so I know it doesn't hit my windscreen in bits and pieces. So what I'll do is I'll kind of put it in there, wait till I've got the grips and everything on and then position them and tighten them from that so I've got the right position. So obviously putting them back is just a reverse of what we had, which is all pretty simple. In my original bars, it had little holes for the clamps. This one doesn't, so I might have to just zip tie them on there. So there's no hard and fast rules where you set your grips, providing they match. If they're slightly out, just undo them and um, reposition them. But uh, I have a, I have Willy G grips on mine, so it's got a little skull. So they're pretty easy to line up. Most, most don't, but you won't have too many issues with it. It's more aesthetics than practicality. Okay, so where are we at? I, uh, as I was putting the left handlebar on, I um, dropped a bolt for the clutch. And with the expletives that I was saying, even I couldn't watch it, so... None of that uh, videoing will be suitable for YouTube. Um, what I'm doing now, so I've got the handlebars in, the clutches in, and I've got it set and tightened. So what I'm doing now is putting this stupid little bolt back in there um, for this clip up here. This one here. 
So as I said, it's got a washer and a bolt on it, so that needs to go underneath very carefully. Um, and then you do it up from the top. But with my sausage fingers, they should be joyful as well. In fact, I might actually even hold it in place with a pair of pliers. That may help, it may not, I don't really know. How in God's name I got that to fit, I don't know. When I mentioned earlier that I had a spare plug, this spare plug in the headlight, that I don't know what it goes to, whilst looking for that, that plug, I've just found another one in the back. So I don't know if that's actually attaches to it. I'll have to clean it up because it's covered in grease, but I'm not sure if that actually attaches to it. Because that's, um, Yeah, see that one's blanked off, so I'm not quite sure. So maybe I'll just take that up here as well, just so it keeps out of the way. So once the cow's on, I'm just wiping off my greasy fingerprints and stuff. Put the windscreen back on. So what I've done, as I mentioned earlier, is I've put a couple of um, zip ties here at the moment until I work out the best place to put those drill holes. I'm not real keen on drilling the bars at the moment after the stupid day I've had, so I'd rather do that when I'm in a better frame of mind. Okay, so now that's all together, the only thing we can do is test drive it. So I'll go grab a helmet and we'll go for a bit of a ride. Well, okay. I don't know if you can hear this. So, first impressions, I like it. I think I might need to change the angle of my clutch and front brake a little bit, but that's only a very minor adjustment. And these are um, at a different angle to what my last ones were. So, they certainly feel different in that regard. But I like that my arms are pretty relaxed. They've got bent elbows. They're not that much higher, but you can definitely tell they are higher. So that's all good. So this will only be a very short ride, as I said, it's just basically just the adjustments and where I'm sitting at. It feels different going into corners and stuff.
because I think I might need to adjust my clutch and brake angle a fraction, but that's that's five seconds to do, so that's nothing. Um, it definitely feels different having the bars. I don't know if they're more forward or they're just spaced out wider. Um, I do like them. It's, it's a comfortable position. It's just a matter of muscle memory and getting back into it. I'm definitely sitting up straighter, without a doubt. Even though it's only two and a half inches, it certainly has made a difference in that. So if you like this sort of content on what not to do when you're putting on Mini 8, give us a, a thumbs up and a like. Don't forget to subscribe.